why aren't we why don't we have our people as organized and and as mobilized in the streets or what have you as as the right seems to using Fox News? I mean, and, and well, it is a rhetorical question because I agree with you. It's p- part of the prevalent the president's ambivalence has hurt us. But what what is going on with it? Why is he ambivalent? Why aren't we more mobilized? Well, uh, there are several things going on. Uh, the right wing got a jump on the Democrats, the progressive Democrats. By the time we went on break for August, they were already organized and uh, prepared for us. They know that we have our town hall meetings. We were planning to have them on health care reform to educate people about what was in the bill, and they were waiting for us. We didn't have any intelligence to tell us what was going on out there and that they would be waiting for us. What they did was they were orchestrated, they were organized, they were paid for, uh, by the insurance companies, and then it caught fire with the unhappy. The unhappy mm-hmm. who don't want to see Obama president anyway right, right, uh, right. came and joined with them, and those people who never want to pay any taxes, even though their taxes will not be increased with this, only the, that, uh, the, the wealthier folks who got the tax breaks under Bush of course, we are going to eliminate those tax breaks to have some money to have pay for this. But the opposition would have them believe that everybody is going to get taxed and poor working people are going to get taxed. It's not true at all. We are making it possible for poor working people to have some insurance coverage because many of them work on these jobs where there's small businesses who can't afford it. They have no coverage. We've worked out a way to get that done. Everybody falls within a slot somewhere from Medicaid, uh, if you have no money, to uh, health credits, if you can't afford to pay all of your insurance and it's taken up more than 11 or 12 percent of your income, or if you work for a small business whose profits are under half a million dollars, they get tax credits so they can help pay for your insurance. So everybody is covered. Yeah. Congresswoman Maxine And why we aren't better organized, I don't know. I don't know what it takes to make us angry. I'm trying to figure it out. We have got to have people who see this as a right, not a privilege. It's just a civil right. And they've got to join with us in these town halls. They've got to do organizing in the churches. They've got to do organizing in the unions. And we've got to put the pressure on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Congresswoman Maxine Waters uh, uh, here with us, folks. Um, also wanted to get you to comment. You are holding hearings uh, in New Orleans or about New Orleans? I did. Uh, I, it's about Katrina in New Orleans. I wanted to find out what's happening with the Road Home Program. We went down right, there for two right. days because people still have homes that uh, have not uh, been uh, rehabbed, reconstructed, but fixed up, even though there was supposed to have been $150,000 up to $150,000 for all of these homes that were uh, damaged in Katrina. Some have never been touched. Some got started, uh, didn't get enough money because the state was not just giving everybody the 150. They were supposedly doing assessment and evaluation, which didn't work out very well. Some people only got a few hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars, and the cost of their repairs were like ten thousand dollars. I mean. So this thing has not worked well. A lot of people are left hanging. We want to find out what happened with the money. We want to know where is the money, where was it spent. We started to hold our hearings. We understand a lot about what has happened. There's uh, um, uh, There's a file that's up in Virginia someplace of people who were not taken care of, but they were just dismissed and thrown into a file. We're going to get that. We're going to find out how much money is left, and we're going to work with that state to try and go back and do some uh, reimbursements to get these homes done. Um, We we had John Payton on the other day, and he shared with us what he told us when he filed suit, as a matter of fact. Um, And um, so we're aware of of a lot of the disparity that's going on, and it's important uh, that you are looking at that. Is the White House doing all it can are you interacting with them on this road no home we're issue? not uh i'm the chair of the subcommittee on housing and community opportunity which falls in my jurisdiction and i you know was pretty much waiting for mary landrew who is the uh, democratic elected uh, senator uh because they don't have a uh a congressperson that kind of represents uh mm-hmm. part of the the most 
impacted part of that area. You know, uh, Bill Jefferson is gone. Uh, we have yeah. now a, um, a new congressman who's a Republican. The uh, governor is a Republican. And uh, Malassan, uh, who is in the area but is um, up against the wall on his reelection. So I decided to just move forward. Uh, we can't just let these people uh, continue uh, to be harmed by policies that don't work and nobody's speaking up for them. And, of course, I was down there also about the big four public housing projects that they tore down and they have yeah, not rebuilt. Yeah. So uh, we've got people who are still living outside of New Orleans who want to come home, and the poor people in the public housing were evacuated, thought they were coming back, uh, and now their plans not only to rebuild them, but the way that they're rebuilding them will not allow for um, will not allow for uh, all of them uh, to come back because they don't have one for one replacement. So right, we're right. dealing with that. Uh, the fact that uh, we we have a window of opportunity here to basically say that if uh, these developers who are down there rebuilding public housing. Uh, are not going to put back enough units for people, I'm going to do everything I can to stop all the money uh, yeah. because that's just not right. You know? Con- Congresswoman Maxine Waters, it, it, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, we should do this much more often. We appreciate your, your spirit and your push. We've got to hold your colleagues accountable. Clearly, we've got to hold this this White House accountable, and, and you bring the fire um, that's necessary. So, um, let, let's keep in touch, okay? All right, we'll do any time. Okay, take care, Thank Congresswoman you so Waters. Much. All right, take care of yourself. Congresswoman Maxine really? Waters uh, here you. with us, folks. Uh, we will uh, be right back. We'll get some more calls in. 866-99-SERIOUS. SERIOUS-146. This is MIP. MIP. <laughs> 